how do you apply and what do you need to apply now that you know what they're looking for. It's a free online application and it's going to require just basic info on your academics, activities, your household and financial background. You have two essays and a handful of short answer questions. And when short answer, they're like really short. What is your favorite book? Describe yourself in a couple of words, like sentences. A school report from your high school counselor. A school profile, which is optional, but they do recommend including that your current high school transcript, and any standardized test score that you want to report. Again, not just your SAT or your ACT, but your AP test, your subject test, your IB exams, all of that stuff. So since QuestBridge does include that binding element, there are some pros and cons. Obviously, the biggest pro is that if you match with one of these schools, you're going to get a full scholarship to a partner college. And you're also going to be able to get that decision really early on in the college admissions process in early December. There's no application fee for QuestBridge or to apply to any of its college partners through Match. You're going to get application guidance through QuestBridge. You'll get access to the network of QuestBridge scholars, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And obviously, there's two opportunities for admission for your QuestBridge finalists, so match and regular decision, which I'll talk about in just a second. Does QuestBridge offer any other programs than the college match and the college prep program? No, those are their two primary offerings. And within them, there are lots of different opportunities. So as I mentioned with college prep, you get to go to the admissions conference, you get to go to summer camps, you get access to grant money. So those are their two, like, two programs that they're doing. They also have a very extensive alumni network that also does events and conferences and things like that. But as for scholarship funding and college preparatory stuff, it's just the two. Great question. Though. There are some cons though to the national match program and the finalist program. There's a limited list of match schools. There are only 48. Obviously there are way more colleges in America and notably several select schools don't participate. Two coming to my mind immediately are Harvard and Cornell, neither of which participate in the program. We've got another great program in the chat. If you apply to the college prep program and don't get in, can you still apply to college match? Yes, definitely. Especially if you've shown a lot of growth between your junior and senior years, that's gonna be an opportunity to show them who you are again in a new application. So just because you don't get the first doesn't mean you won't get the second. However, the first, if you do get the first, the college prep program, you're gonna be much more likely to get the national match program. We talked about the pros a little bit and one of the cons which is that there are not that many match schools although they do increase them every year just a couple of years ago it was only 40 they've added eight schools to that i think it was in the 30s when i applied so something to keep in mind and the you're also unable to apply early to other schools when you participate in national match so if you are accepted as a questbridge finalist and you're ranking those, regardless of whether or not you're ranking those 12 schools, you can't apply early decision anywhere else. So if you're ranking schools that are QuestBridge partners, you can't apply early to a non-QuestBridge partner school. Since the QuestBridge match program is like a ginormous early decision scheme. But I guess a kind of another pro off this is that through match, you basically get to apply to multiple schools early decision. However, you just have to go to the one that you ranked the highest. And then of course, national match is binding as in other early decision kind of setups. Not to be confused with early action, which is non-binding at all. You just get to submit and learn if you got in early enough. However, three schools, four, sorry, four schools do not participate in the binding element, Princeton, Stanford, and Yale. So if you rank one of those schools and get in um, and it's your highest ranked school, you don't have to go. So something to keep in mind. So let's say you are someone who is not looking to rank, but you're still interested in becoming a QuestBridge finalist. This was the path I chose. I didn't want to rank any schools because I had my heart set on one and that is the one school that I wanted to go to. And if I got matched with a, like a lower tiered school, I didn't want to have to give up my dream school. So I applied through QuestBridge regular decision. This is really great because finalists who do not match with one of these 12 schools that they've ranked or choose not to rank schools, they can apply to any of the QuestBridge partner schools without application fees. College application fees can get pretty expensive, anywhere from 50 to 75 bucks, if not more per school. And if you're applying to 10 plus schools, that starts adding up really quickly on top of things like paying for test prep courses or just your fee to take the ACT or the SAT or the, your subject test, it starts to get pretty pricey. So through regular decision, QuestBridge regular decision, you do not have to pay application fees to any of their partner colleges. And all of these colleges are still promising to meet 100% of your demonstrated financial need. So you may not get that full ride scholarship, 
but you'll get all of the money that your family needs. And occasionally this might be a full ride scholarship if your EFC is zero. So even if you don't match, that doesn't mean you're not necessarily gonna get a full ride or just a lot of financial aid since you've already demonstrated that you're a high achieving low income student.